Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Oh, it's getting hot already here. So I apologize if I'm like, you know, out of breath or whatever, but yeah, it's it's getting hot. So um yeah, so op our Operation Zero Tolerance. This is uh, part two of the video series. Uh, we did a video about um, Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson just to show like a different human perspective on it last time. And like I said, I know that they're definitely going to change it for the television series because this is kind of, yeah, this covers, um, you know, multiple comic books. But it's a little bit of a slower pace com compared to, you know, a TV series. So I know they're going to change it. I'm not sure how they're going to change it yet, but um, we will find out together, basically. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about, let's see, X-Men 66 is the next one. And they had this a lot on um, X-Men, you know, uh, covers like because you demanded it something and like there's a because you demanded it like gambit got his own series because you demanded it um the end of dazzler <laughs> this series which is so sad but you know just various other things like because you demanded it here it is so which i liked the dazzler series it was fun it was different but you know obviously it's not like a typical comic book series that most people would read i i believe so we saw Dr. Uh, Celia Reyes in the last issue, and here we see her again, and people are celebrating, you know, because, again, because they're finally doing something about the mutant problem, and they asked her again, like, how do you feel about this? You know, she's like, it's about time the X-Men, like, every mutant got what they deserve. And then she whispers, you know, and God help us, because, of course, um, so a... Male in his 20s with multiple stab wounds is brought into the ER. And she does, she and her team do their best to save him. But then they pronounce him dead. And then they hear a voice say, and, and that's all? Just like that? And they're like, what the heck? And one of the nurses is like, but I don't understand your flesh and blood. I took your, you were dead. I took your pulse myself. And he's like, I am your salvation. I'm your savior against the mutant who hides among you. And they're like, oh, Dr. Reyes, look out. Because, um, and she's, you know, because he's targeting her. Like she's mutant. And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. When, of course, she knows because she is mutant. And she's been dreading this day all her life. Like all this, all the work, all the sacrifice she, you know, went through to become a doctor, you know, pretty much it's gone. And her um, force field reacts like instantaneously, like she has no control over it. any force that, you know, um, reacts against her. Her um, force field automatically triggers. triggers. It's a cytoplasmic biofield and extends six inches from anywhere on her body and it hurts like when she gets hit it hurts but you know it hurts less than you know dying <laughs> or it actually the blast actually hitting her so he basically takes one of the nurses captive and says let's see how much you care about these people like since you you know since you hit among them and let's you know basically using him for blackmail and he said, all you need to do is just stop this aggression. And she says, I can't. And he took that to mean, you know, I can't. I, you know, I won't stop. I won't, you know, let you basically kill me. But really, she's saying I can't because I can't turn it off. So Iceman comes to her rescue. And she proceeds to hit him with a surgical tray. And she's like, what do you mean come to my rescue? You're ruin you've ruined my life. You know, he promised he wouldn't tell anyone. 
you know, he, Professor Xavier, he approached me three years ago and asked me to join my his school. And I told him no. And he promised me he wouldn't say anything. And yet, here you are. So they're still trying to escape from the Prime Sentinels. So Bobby encases the room in ice in order to get away. They go through the sub-basement. And make it to the basement. And basically Celia says, you know, I was six when my dad was laying on the sidewalk bleeding out. You know, because she grew up in, um, in the, in like the Bronx, in the a ghetto. And he was just you know, stabbed. Oh, like it's so hot and humid. I could feel my hair just like growing. <laughs> oh, anyway, sorry. And of course, you know, as I've said before, I can't turn on the air conditioner because it makes too much noise. Like you won't, you can't, because the air conditioner um, is right above me, the vent. And um, if I turn it on, then you can't even hear what I'm saying. So unfortunately, like, I have the fan on, but I can't turn it on all the way high because, again, it makes too much noise. But, um, like I said, I, yeah, so I'll just have to suffer a little bit. <laughs> so she's telling him she was six when her dad bled out in her arms. And she decided right then that she should do something, that she should, um, she wanted to become a doctor so that she could save other people when she couldn't save her dad. And she's like, all that, you know, sacrifice, all that, um, all that work is gone for nothing, you know, and she's really upset. And she's like, your, your founder promised me that he wouldn't involve me. And Bobby's like, look around you. This is bigger than just the X-Men. It's bigger than just mutants. It involves all of us. So, and then Bastion at the very end shows again, you know, Xavier, that he's captured all of his, well, not all of his X-Men, but, you know, these X-Men. And Bastion says, trust me, Xavier, I am far from done. So we have um, the next one. Like I said, I'm kind of flying through these issues because... Um, you know, I don't need to narrate like every single action thing that happens. I'm just pointing out the highlights. Like I said, it's, it's easy. It's harder to do. The pacing is definitely comic book pacing because, you know, you have to draw out and, and narrate the action. Whereas one scene in, um, in, in the anime series, you know, it's, it happens pretty quick. Like, they blast her, she puts up her force field basically all in one frame. And here you have to, you know, show them blasting her, and then she put... Anyway, so I feel like they will definitely change this up, but they will keep, like, the heart of what it is. Um, let's see. So that one is done. Okay, so we'll move on to um, 67. Again. So we are now in Israel, and um, Sabra, who is a mutant um, Mossad, Mossad agent, um, she has downloaded files from her government that she feels like the professor and the X-Men should know. They're about um, Bastion. And she walks out of there thinking she's home free, but no. The um, Prime Sentinels, whose part of their objective is to protect, like, their secrets. Um, and, well, and, of course, she's a mutant, so, you know. Um, part of their objective is to protect their secrets and take out mutants. So they ask her for the disc back. She says no. And so a fight ensues. And she is um, 
has super strength and durability and she can fly. I think she, I'm pretty sure she has durability. So she's like, I have to get this disc to Xavier and the X-Men. So Bobby and Cecilia are looking for a place to hide. And um, they happen upon Warren's um, Soho apartment. So they decide to hide in there because at least they know they're safe there. And uh, Celia makes a joke. Cecilia makes a joke about how, like, isn't isn't this pretty like a little obvious, like, as into where where to find us? So they hear a noise, and you know, Bobby's like, "Shush!" And she's like, "Don't tell me to shush!" And he unleashes an ice blast and accidentally um, <laughs> ices this poor girl's arms. You can see her. She's like, oh, cold. This is so cold. Ow, ow. And, of course, Dr. Reyes, you know, ch chastised Bobby for almost giving her frostbite. And they're like, who are you? Well, Bobby asked who, you know, who she is because, of course, Celia wouldn't know. And she's like, I'm Angie Quayle. Yeah, I knew it was a bird. Um, she was Candy Southern's old roommate, which Warren used to date Candy Southern. And she says, I'm house-sitting for Warren. And then, um, basically, we see Bastion trying to goad Xavier into using his powers that he no longer has. And Xavier counters that says telepathy doesn't even work on you because he knows because Gene, you know, tried it on him and it didn't work. And this was, you know, that was in 333 and that was before Onslaught happened. So, yeah, he already knew that, you know, telepathy wouldn't even work on him, even if he had his powers. So um, Angie thinks that you know, Dr. Ray has looked his bum, so she's like, do you want to talk about it? Is there anything I can do? She's like, no, I really don't, I really don't want to talk about it. And she's like, well, okay, if you're, you know, if you're sure. And she says, aren't you freaked out by this? And Angie says, well, you don't, you know, get to be about around Warren for too long and not get, you know, used to some weirdness. And so Bobby's trying to get a hold of someone, anyone. He is called Muir Island. He even asked the operator if they have a listing for a Nate Gray, you know, X-Men. So, and Bobby starts shifting to his human form. And she, she's like, what's going on? And guess what? Yep, that's right. Angie is a Sentinel. Like, you just, be, and that's, that's the thing that's so dangerous about these Sentinels. Is that, like right here, she looks and reacts and acts just like a human. And then, but no. And look, she changed clothes. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what's so dangerous about these Sentinels. Is they look human. They act human. Like you would never know that they're not human until the moment right before they were about to strike. So they are saved again by gunfire. Apparently, like, because Sentinels can counteract powers, and they've been saying, you know, different Sentinels have been saying, you know, I, I've counteracted your ice powers. That's what she did to Bobby. And she they don't know how to counteract um, Dr. Reyes' shields yet. So they're still trying to figure that out. But again, saved by gunfire. And this is um, NYPD Detective Charlotte Jones, another um, one of uh, Warren's exes. And um, she, you know, saves the day by shooting at the Sentinel. And of course, like I said, Sentinels, when they get shot, they don't die, but it does slow them down. Gives, you know, people a moment to get away. So she takes them to the police station where they think, you know, they'd be, where she thinks they'd be safe. 
and um celia is like doesn't this seem like really like convenient i mean you know she shows up just in time and he's like well she dated warren for years i mean she's one of my friends i mean she was almost family so there's no way that you know she would she would betray me but little does she he know you can see all the sentinels waiting behind the the two-way mirror and what happened is that they have her son timothy and they've threatened to kill him if she didn't bring um bobby and um dr reyes to you know the police station and if you're wondering like i didn't think i mentioned this before but if you're wondering why dr reyes sounds familiar she was a character in the new mutants movie but I mean, I think that the creators just needed a doctor figure that was in the X-Men universe. Because, honestly, she doesn't even want to be an X-Men. So she's not in, like, a ton of issues, honestly. She's not, like, a huge part of the team. But um, I think they just needed, like, a kind of vaguely familiar doctor associated with X-Men. So they used uh, Dr. Reyes in that movie. So... Bobby figures out that there's someone, like, there's someone there. And all of a sudden, though, when they're about to attack, the lights go out. And then that's thanks to Mero. I mean, how she found them, I don't know. <laughs> I think she might have some tracking skills or something, being a, a Morlock. So the next one, and this is kind of reminiscent of, you know, the poster for um, Uncanny X-Men 141, 142, you know, Days of the Future Past. And it's saying fugitive on it. So two police officers go down to the basement to investigate what's going on. And Maro, Maro now knocks them out and she muses to herself, like, I don't even understand why I didn't kill you. So maybe Spider-Man's words had an impact on her. So as they burst through, I mean, there's like five of them. Like, what are they going to do? So what happens is they blast them. And Celia's powers knocks them through the wall. So they escape. And then they're in basically the lobby. And there's the prime sentinel cops. And then there's the real cops. And they're like, great, now what are we supposed to do? And he says, like, Bobby says, I wonder if Scott ever had days like this. And then he says, she's like, what? <laughs> He's like, i just wondering if things could get worse. And you never say something like that because, of course, they can always get worse. I mean, yeah, that's just jinxing yourself. And then we come back to um, Senator Robert Kelly, and he he's just, he's just distraught because he's like zero tolerance. Zero tolerance? Isn't that, you know, how um, Hitler felt about, and the Nazis felt about the Jews? Like, these are, you know, these are people. I mean, of course, like, I just wanted to keep people safe because, of course, he went through an assassination attempt. His wife was killed, murdered. So he just was trying to make the American people safe. And, um, you know, Gyrick says, you're just looking out for the American people's best interest. And Robert uh, Kelly says, but ordinary people are getting caught in this war getting caught in the crossfire they're you know they're dying and Gyrick says you know cat friend casualties of friendly fire is to be expected like that's the nature of the beast and senator kelly can't believe what he's saying he's like that's insane talk and he's like we're insane times and basically robert kelly is like no, this this has to stop. I'm going to talk to the president and I'm going to talk to the council. And he says, 
we have a problem. We have a big problem. Because he just doesn't feel like this is right anymore. Like, it doesn't, the ends don't justify the means. Like, it's not just mutants that are getting hurt, but ordinary citizens. I mean, in the, the issue we talked about in part one, um, the Sentinels were willing to um, kill Spider-Man and Gyrick, even though they weren't, you know, mutants, just because they were compromised and they wanted to, like, scrub the whole scene. So, criminals think, hey, the lights are out. This is a great idea to, you know, great time to escape and pay back the cops. And Marrow says, you're a lot safer in there than you are out here with me. And, I mean, she does look pretty scary. I mean, she has bones sticking out of everywhere. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, you're right. So, there's a firefight still going out on. Charlotte dives in front of Bobby. Shoots the guy, the sentinel, and also, though, takes a bullet in the arm. And she, you know, said, uh, apologizes and said, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, they have my son. Um, and then we see uh, Sabra has arrived in the U.S. And then she, you know, shows um, Dr. Ray is a picture of her son, Timothy. And Mara, Maro, it's hot. I'm sorry. Um, she shows up and says, you know, Morlocks get killed all the time. And yet one pretty surface child is in danger and the whole world goes, you know, comes to the rescue. And so they go and they're trying to, you know, find out where her son was taken because they promised they would you know help her get him back and they it's too quiet and then they run into an ambush like how in the world are they going to get away from all of those so we will leave that for the conclusion for part three of this series and you will know like how they got away and then we can kind of discuss like the implications of what all has gone on so i hope you join me for that video. And until next time, bye.